If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. We're going to begin by drawing a picture that represents the information presented in the question. So we have the building and this red colored window. The height of the building we have denoted as capital H. We have also noted the distance from where the object is dropped to the top of the window as being y1 and then the distance from where the object is dropped to the bottom of the window as being y2 and at those two points the top and the bottom of the window we have a velocity and a time. We'll want to take note that we are calling in this question the downward direction as being positive y and the upward direction as being negative y. The question notes that from the top to the bottom of the window is a distance of 1.2 meters so from our drawing we know that y2 minus y1 is equal to 1.2 meters. We also know that it takes 0.125 seconds for that fall to occur from the top of the window to the bottom. And so we can say that t2 minus t1 is equal to 0.125 seconds. We can use the following equation from kinematics to solve for the initial velocity of the object. Now remember in this case initial velocity would refer to the velocity at the top of the window whereas the final velocity would refer to the bottom of the window. Keep in mind that this y2 minus y1 is sometimes denoted as just delta y and then the t2 minus t1 is sometimes denoted as delta t. We've expanded them just so we can follow the notation that we started with. So we can go ahead and plug in all the known values. Note that g will be positive 9.8 rather than negative 9.8 because we are calling the downward direction positive y. And when you solve for v1, the initial velocity, you should get approximately 8.99 meters per second. If you have any questions about the algebra there, please let me know in the comments. Using this velocity, we're now going to be able to solve for y1. What we want to do is call the initial position for this next segment of the problem right here. So remember that the ball is being dropped, that would mean that the initial velocity would equal zero. And then our final position is going to be where we have marked v1, t1, and y1. So this will serve as our final position. And we already know the velocity at that point, it was the v1. So using this equation from kinematics, we're going to be able to solve for y1. Note that because the initial velocity is zero, we can eliminate this term. Also note that the initial position, since we're starting at the origin, would be zero as well. Note again that g is a positive value, and when we solve for y1, we see we get approximately 4.12 meters. And so that's a result that we're going to want to hold on to and refer back to later. Now, after the bottom of the window, the steel ball continues to fall towards the ground, and it's going to hit the ground at a point that we can call time 3. And at that point, we know that the ball has traveled a distance of h, which if we want, we can also call that y3 for the sake of consistency with our other distances noted. Now, let's keep in mind this statement. The time that the ball spends below the bottom of the window is 2 seconds. So in the picture, the total time in this region here is 2 seconds. We were also told to assume that the upward flight is an exact reverse of the fall. What that means is that the two seconds below the window can be split up into one second down and then one second back up as it travels from T3 to T2. So this time is one second. We know that time is one second. And therefore we can write that T3 minus T2 is equal to one second. And that's from the symmetry that was described in the question. Also remember that moving from the bottom of the window to the top took 0.125 seconds. So going from right here back up to the top of the window is another 0.125 seconds. So hopefully it's clear then that if the time from T3 to T2 is one second, and then from T2 to T1 is 0.125 seconds, the total time from T3 all the way up to T1 would be 1.125 seconds. In other words, we can say safely that T3 minus T1 is equal to 1.125 seconds. That is a very important result, so make sure that if that didn't make sense, just go back and listen to that a couple more times, perhaps. We can now refer back to the equation from kinematics that we used earlier. 
Once again, the equation contains a delta y, but this time we've defined it in terms of a y3 minus y1, and that means that the delta t would be t3 minus t1. Now we've just determined that this t3 minus t1 is 1.125 seconds, so we'll be able to plug it in here and also there. Also, we earlier calculated y1. That was the 4.12 meters. So we can plug that in for y1, and that's going to allow us to be able to solve for y3, which if you look back at the picture is exactly what we're looking for. y3 represented the height of the building. Got a little crammed here in trying to squeeze in all the writing, but remember we're trying to find y3, and when we solve for y3, we should get approximately 20.4 meters, and that is indeed the correct height of the building. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so that you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.